Okay. Would you introduce yourself to that camera over there? All right, I'm Ed Cody, and I was superintendent of schools at Northside from 1965 to 1982. And I'm Jimmy Elrod, and I served on this board uh, uh, six years from 1963 to 1969, which means that I, my last year on the board was 38 years ago, so if, uh, I don't remember it too good. That's why I have those notes here. <coughs> well, I'm Jack Jordan, and I came to Northside in 59 and was hired by Mr. Cody and the board and Mr. Boone, and I retired. December 31st of 93, which is 11 years after I Wow. Did. Yeah. I'm <clears throat> to work on your house on the roof, right? Yeah. But I do not, yes. Do not do that's, that. do not work on the roof of the house. Jimmy, t tell us what attracted you to Northside School District when you came here. Well, um, first of all, the, my first house was not in the Northside School District uh, 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 right after we married, but uh, immediately made most of my friends uh, in the Northside School District, including Ed Cody, and uh, so the next I bought was in Northside, and the next four, as a matter of fact, were, so I, I was attracted here because I knew some people <coughs> because uh, Northside had such good reputation. <coughs> Ed, what, what brought you to Northside? Well, I was, uh, when I got out of college in 47, I uh, coached over at Harlandale for a year. And then I, uh, at, at the end of that stint, I thought, well, I wasn't sure how education was for me. And I went in the business world for a couple of years. And uh, I decided I wanted to apply and get back into education. So I applied to Mr. Biggers. I understood there might be an opening. so. I was hired to teach in junior high school, and it was here at Leon Valley. They had the seventh and eighth grade uh, classes here, and uh, so that's how I got back in. I think that was my one year where I was just a teacher. That's all I did was teach. I taught English for that year. So that was in uh, three years later. That was in 1951. Long time ago. No, just the other day. <laughs> Jimmy, when you ran for the board, you ran really kind of winner take all uh, by place, not yeah. by a district. Didn't have single member districts. Yes, that's, that's correct. Well, there, were, there were three. Uh, one of the reason that I decided to run for the board was that, that there were three vacancies on the board at the time. And I had a, a one year old son who just uh, started a sophomore one year first grade son who just started uh, school in Northside and, I, and with the three vacancies on there I thought surely I'd have some chance uh, to win but it turned out there were 12 candidates for those three places and uh, uh, John Bryant and Miller Judson and I decided we'd run a, 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 as a ticket and sure enough believe it or not uh, with uh, a lot of hard uh, legwork, uh, the three of us got the l largest number of votes and, uh, and took those three places. And one of the uh, candidates uh, uh, that ran against us was Bill Thornton, and he didn't give up. He ran again a couple of years later and, and won. Yeah, perseverance. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> how, how many did you get? Oh, I don't know, three or four. I don't really remember, but I remember. I do remember that in the early days that if you got more than three or four hundred votes. Uh, you were in. You were in, that's right. <laughs> uh, we had a large, large district, but we didn't have very big turnout for those school board elections. D describe the school district in that time frame. Well, I don't know how to say that, except that, that we were in a, in a uh, uh, transition period. Uh, the school uh, district started, of course, as a, uh, as a country school district, common school district, I suppose. And uh, we were sort of in, in a very, very large area. I guess the largest uh, geographical area in the state of Texas, but a very small part of it was populated. Uh, but uh, we were making the transition from uh, agriculture and vocational school area to a cosmopolitan or metropolitan kind of a school district. Uh, and so things were changing considerably as uh, we as we went along. It also was growing very, very fast, uh, uh, percentage-wise at that time. 
They talk about citizen soldiers. Sometimes we should refer to board members as citizen board members. What, what were you doing at the time that you served on the board? What was your occupation? Yeah, for, for the entire time that I served on the board, I was an employee of a company called Maverick Clark Company. It doesn't exist anymore by that name. Uh, and office products firm. I was sales manager at the time and uh, the next year became the president of the company and, and remained there until the company was sold. I can remember one time they say, you know, a good leader ask, answers the phone and Ed Cody did that. But I called your office for some reason and I got you. I didn't have to go through anybody. I just I said, this is Jimmy Elrod. Well, that could have been because I thought that was the right thing to do. It could have been because I was too poor to have a <laughs> receptionist. <laughs> <I don't know. clears throat> what offices did you hold while you were on the board? Uh, I only held one, and that was uh, president of the board. I served for two years there. Um, when I came on the board, <clears throat> the man, uh, very res highly respected and very uh, capable uh, president of the board, had been president for for years, I don't, maybe 15, 20 years, a long time. And uh, when he finally uh, decided to move on to the to another position, um, I ran for the for that for that position. The first thing I did was to say, I really think more people ought to have an opportunity to serve on this. And so we uh, set a term limitation for officers, and I think we set it either two years or uh, one. I'm not sure about that, but that's the only job I had. Ed. You've seen the district go over a longer period of time than Jimmy did while he was in office. Jimmy has seen the district grow for the same, basically the same length of time. How, how would you describe the district as it was progressing at the time you came with it and through Jimmy's service, let's say? Well, pretty much, uh, yeah, he's pretty accurate. Just a small, we had three stages of growth. We were a rural school district. The, the common school districts consolidated and became what was labeled as a rural high school district. This was the legal terminology. And uh, that enabled us to bond ourselves and uh, build Northside High School. Then the next, the board was really not satisfied with the governance under the county school system. And that's where we were. Clyde Smith was this county, county school district. A superintendent, and uh, so they wanted to uh, come out from under that, and we did. We voted, uh, had the people vote, became independent of the county, consolidated into an independent, and then that was just simply for the, so we could govern ourselves, so that we could control our own funding, and raise our own, and we assessed and collect taxes on our own, and uh, from that point on, it was independent students. Those years we were we were pretty rural and pretty small. We had uh, operated, uh, I don't think, only six elementaries and a high school at the, when I first taught. And uh, but then it began to grow, and uh, we we began to grow, as Jimmy said, pretty rapidly after that. But it was strictly in uh, growth in uh, housing and, and uh, bedroom development as opposed to commercial growth. Uh, and that is a whole lot, although the commercial growth is there, yeah. there's still a lot oh, yeah. of residential. But you know, I, uh, when I first became superintendent, I think we had uh, 13 schools, uh, elementary, two high schools, two junior high schools. And uh, we had about 13, well, I'm between 11 and 13, I, I'm not exact on that figure, somewhere between 11,000. 35 students. And when I retired, we, we, we had 35,000 students and 20 more schools than they did in the beginning. So, you know, you think the whole time in that 17 years was confronted with the development from 20 more schools and new students. Yeah, yeah the teachers uh, along to go them. along with it. Yeah, teachers. I, I, I laughed about that. Teachers. Bus drivers, school buses, property acquisition, you know, all kinds of personnel. And, uh, and growth from pen and ink accounting to 
<laughs> to data processing, and you were there. You can remember those days as well as I can. And the struggle we had, you know, in, in, in a, getting people to adapt to more modern methods of accounting, and both fiscal accounting and pupil accounting, and everything we did. Well, I can remember driving down Wurzbach Road with you one time and saying, you think anybody will ever understand the troubles we've been, the challenges we've been through. Yeah. But you, you came to education really about the time of the Gilmer Aiken finance law. That's that, correct. Uh, First Gilmer Aiken operation right in the beginning. And the best explanation of the old Gilmer Aiken law that I've ever heard, yeah. you gave. Well, I appreciate that. And we operated under it, and it was a good law at the time, you know. It was, it, it needed supplanting when it was supplanted, but it really did help the public schools at the time. We did, it, it helped, it did a good job. Jimmy, you, you mentioned that you lived outside the district and then came to Northside and lived here. Uh, I also lived outside the district. Uh, I built my first house. I built our first house outside the district. But I'm like the, the bumper sticker. I got here as fast as I could. Right. Um, <clears throat> who were some of the other members of the board when you were serving, Jimmy? Well, I told you it was 38 years ago, so I'm going to have to look at my script sheet here to think about that. Um, That's why I gave it to you in advance. Jimmy. Yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Carlos Kuhn was, uh, of course, uh, the uh, senior person on the board, Miller Judson, John Bryan and I came on together. Henry Howell was on the board, a very famous uh, TV personality in San Antonio. Billy Busby, uh, Russ Mason, and a couple of others whose names I don't can't recall. Later on, uh, Ernie DeWinney, Bob Beard, and Bill Thornton came on. But those were Marvin the ones Niebuhr. that are... Marvin Niebuhr. Yeah, Marvin Niebuhr, right. Yeah. That's the one I was trying to think of. Clarence Lesberg. Lesberg. Yeah, Clarence Lesberg. It, it was an interesting time at that. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say it, it'll probably cut it out, but uh, I'll say that it was a time when th there were Lutherans on the board and Baptists and Methodists, and they made up the kind of the majority of the board. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and there was a, a time when uh, you and I were at the same meeting and people asked what were the biggest challenges in education for Texas and you said finance and I said discipline um, and I think both those things have come true to some yeah, degree. That was true. Yeah. Uh, and discipline partially tied in with how do you hire all the good personnel and yeah. and maintain them and Northside has done an excellent job uh, doing that. Well I think I think that's was an accurate observation and you know, it's a struggle. It's been it's always been a struggle to properly finance our uh, our desires and our concerns about enriching our program and putting everything we possibly could into the classroom and the learning programs uh, were there. We didn't have our finances were so limited. You know, I, I couldn't help but be jealous. And we were sitting here and growing with a lot of kids. And every, and every, it was just constantly looking at Northeast with two great bowls with a good deal of income that we didn't have. I was jealous of it, you know, I, I'll admit. And, and our commercial growth came a little more slowly. And, uh, but when it did come, it was fine. But, but and it enabled us to do a lot. But I'll tell you the truth, <laughs> I was envious and, and jealous for a while. Well, back, uh, I was uh, sort of a halfway measure uh, involved in a real estate business, which I later on became my career, and uh, uh, and was talking to a lot of people in the real estate business. And uh, when folks would come to town to look for housing from out of town, the uh, the, the brokers in town were steering them out of the North Side School District. And of course, if you didn't have the the population growth, you couldn't have the commercial growth because that, that all depends on it. We didn't have any of, of those kinds of things. And I, I felt that one of the reasons that we didn't have was because we weren't telling the story of how good a school district we were and what we were doing for the children and, uh, and that sort of thing. And so consequently, uh, we uh, decided we were going to start telling that story. And that's how Bonnie Ellison came into the picture, wasn't it's it? true. Sure was. When we hired Bonnie Ellison. And she told them people how good we were. 
And, and we were. That's and he exactly helped us. Right. We were. She did help us tell the story. We also had another financial problem, and that was the uh, uh, the uh, difficulty of uh, financing all of the military uh, population that, that existed here, whose employer, the federal government, didn't pay any taxes. That's right. And we had another bill. I've forgotten what that was called. <laughs> <laughs> the sunset it ever to re up and re justify the fact that you needed that to have that impact money. aid. Very impact, aid. impact aid. And That's we right. were certainly impacted by that. And we, we depended on that money sure did. Had tremendously. It helped us. And that had an effect really on the federal government's observation of how school, schools were financed. That's and right. they brought federal housing programs oh, yeah. into that uh, right. area of impact. That's exactly and, right. In well, fact, that ties well, in with one of your real experiences, uh, lawsuit yeah. uh, over the uh, area of having to combine schools and one in which we won because of the impact of the federal That's government right. in financing housing in a particular area. Our biggest point in that was. But uh, it was two other things that were brand new for us at that time. One was the, the uh, importance, uh, the realization of the importance of, uh, of special education, which we were sort of uh, Inventing, inventing as we went along, yeah, just there was started. the effort to, to mainstream and that That's cost right. more money and so oh, forth. Yeah. And busing and the Rodriguez case, all of which happened during the time that we were involved in this. That's right. So we, I, I have to say that we'd like to spend a lot of time planning for the future, but we did an awful lot of problem solving too. Oh, adjusting. Absolutely. Putting out fires. Right. <laughs> a lot of fires. Jimmy, you were on the board and I think virtually a year away from being president when you hired a, a, an Ed Cody as superintendent. Right. And he's been my mentor for all these years and uh, he really led this district well. It was a good hire, you know, a good well, promotion. If you, if you were to ask me what was the most important thing I did on the board, it was to make sure that Ed Cody was the superintendent and you were his deputy. Yeah. Would that be a That's good answer? Nice. <laughs> that would be an excellent answer. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> One of the things that I, I know Mr. Cody and I both take great pride in uh, was your service on the State Board of, of Education. Um, and you were on it at a, an important time. Uh, quite frankly, I wish we had more on the State Board like you now, but mm -hmm. the whole makeup has changed. Um, how do you remember those years of service on the State Board of Education? Well, I served from 74 to 83. That was a very uh, interesting, totally different from work, uh, working on the Northside School Board. A lot more politics involved in that. Um, the State Board members are not elected from any particular party, Democrat, Republican, whatever, but uh, it became a very political issue uh, to, to be on the board. Uh, textbooks was, a, was a, a big problem at that time. Uh, the uh, Education of the Handicapped Act, 94-142, uh, reared its ugly head, and uh, and we spent, I don't know, I, I counted up the other day, something like 69 Fridays and or Saturdays in Austin just in public hearings of people who had a problem and couldn't take it to court until they'd gone through that process of a public hearing. So that was that was pretty complicated. But uh, we, we did a pretty good job, I thought, of concentrating on the education. I was fortunate to be elected the chairman of the uh, permanent school fund. And uh, uh, I guess the two things that I did there that were, uh, was most important was to uh, allow, get the legislator to allow us to sell a uh, tremendous amount of bonds we had in that school fund that was earning two and a half, three percent in that day. The schools only profited from the of the dividends that you earned, the earnings of the fund, if it was only an earning 2%, you didn't get very much out of that. The second thing I did was interest rates were so very, very high that um, school districts couldn't sell bonds because they couldn't afford to pay the interest. And, and uh, I was elected to the, uh, uh, to uh, the, uh, uh, what was it called? Well, anyway, it was a group of people under Bill Hobby uh, to study some of the problems of, of uh, schools and was, was successful in getting uh, the permanent school fund uh, to be allowed to, uh, uh, to guarantee the bonds, which allowed them to get a better rating and therefore get uh, to uh, uh, save a great deal of money that time. It wouldn't would be too important now with low interest rates, but it's 17% is big importance, yeah. Uh -huh. I remember 
how thrilled we were to have Mr. Elrod on the board. Yeah. But the service that he gave at that time, he just demonstrated quite well that um, the, 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 the fiscal responsibility that, that he brought to the table. Cody was uh, responsible for my being interested. In, I really wasn't interested in it. He, he persuaded me that I should be interested in doing <laughs> running. Right right. He's a good persuader. He is, really. And you stayed there a while. You know. Yeah. At that time, by the way, uh, the state board uh, uh, time of service was uh, six years. So you run for the board, you serve six years. But yeah. every other year they had redistricting, and so you had to run again. And I ran three times <laughs> in order to serve for <laughs> nine years. <clears throat> Who was the commissioner of education? Marlon Brockett was a commissioner when I went on there, and I served with four different commissioners, by the way, during that time. Alton Bowen and Brockett and uh, Bill uh, uh, Ray Kirby. Ray oh, Bill Ray Kirby, right? Ray Bynum, yeah. right? Yeah. Kirby, he's uh, from down here. Kirby came uh, uh, and made Lord a speech Bill. at the dedication of Elrod right. Elementary did, School. Yeah. I he served with some that. very important people, by the way. Two of the members of, of that board were past national PTA presidents, two ladies at different times. Uh, one of them later on became a congressman for Mercedes, and three of them became state senators or state representatives. Kind of a stepping stone to get into real politics, I guess. Ed, tell us about Leon Valley Elementary as, as you recall it in those early days. You were here, yeah. uh, and you saw this the, the emergence of Leon Valley at this intersection. Yeah, it was. It was um, the old school. This this building was where I had a classroom. I was a teaching principal. I had I uh, had 40, 40 youngsters and principal at the same time, and that was a tough year. Well, that was a hard, hard year to handle. That. That's a good pupil teacher ratio. Oh, Forty kids and principal, <laughs> but we had. This building, we had uh, we, we, this X building, it was a long three room building, had a little white building that existed down below, the other side of it, since been destroyed. And you know, the first year I married, we lived in a teacherage on Leon Valley campus, and as the principal could live there. And uh, that only lasted one year. The white, that was. You're on duty 24 20. hours a day, and I thought we'll do something about this. So we we didn't last long, but uh, we uh, we had a really a fine community. The, the parents in the community were just supportive of this of the uh, school, and they were thrilled with the uh, opportunity to serve. And they they came up and helped and raised funds, and they just it was a really interactive thing. It was just great the community and. We had, we just, it wasn't very large. We had, uh, I guess, uh, six or eight uh, class, uh, well, it went to two different times up on that. That time when I was full-time principal, well, we had like eight, eight uh, teachers then, and it was, uh, ten, ten teachers, and it was full-time. But, uh, you know, Jimmy mentioned the PTA, and I think I'm in this, and if it weren't for PTAs district-wide, We'd have been in bad trouble. They, they helped raise more Absolutely. funds, supplied the schools with more equipment over the years. They still do that. Yeah, and it was just a, you know, it was just hard to exist without them. It just was, they just a great contribution. Uh, but our, our uh, interaction here, we put on carnivals, the parents, kids, all of them, they were just great. Was this a dairying community? Yeah, we had several large. dairies. Right. Kruger's uh, dairy down here and uh, Knowlton. Yeah, well, Knowlton was here, but there was another one, right. Brown. Brown dairy was here. And Mossburger. Moss, yeah, those and, and, and Evers. Uh, Evers, all of them <laughs> had big dairy farms. They were just good people, you know. They, they were hard work and get up early every, you know, every day. Sure. Getting up early was what they had to do, right. and they were just great people. They were. Uh, Eddie Anderson had a garage right up his street, and he'd fix our buses for us when they'd break down until the hunting season. Until hunting season. We had a hard time when hunting season started. You put a wreath on the door. <laughs> That's the truth. That's right. He'd leave town. But it was, 
It was fun. <laughs> and uh, the principal's job, when uh, one, of, one of my jobs, when the bus driver got sick, I had to drive the school bus. So that was part <laughs> of it. <laughs> it. It's interesting to hear you talk about the PTAs and uh, Jimmy as a parent and a board member and that kind of service. But uh, as I recall, um, with the emergence of a second high school, the board, Mr. Boone and you, Ed, decided that they ought to have kind of a coordinating group and yeah. became the Northside PTA Council. PTA Council. Right. Right. Which has served the district and well. It's done a good job, a great job. Tell me how you heated Leon Valley at that time. Butane. We had butane, butane heaters. And I, I remember bringing the trucks up and heating with butane. We didn't have air conditioning, but we did have butane heating. We had to, <coughs> and we had our own well. Yep. And you know, there were times when <laughs> the well would have problems. And you know, when the well goes out, you really got problems. We had two guys in the district that were, you know, they had that business, and they he called on. We had to have them over here. But they were good. And they helped us. Well, well how, how, how <coughs> did you me. air condition, Leon? Down. It wasn't air condition. <laughs> it was. It was hot. <laughs> Open the windows. And Open the windows. Open. Oh, wow. There's Get a breeze. The well, I do remember one of the projects that the PTA had was to furnish big pedestal fans in all of our classrooms. <laughs> And it was a great deal. You know, it, was, oh, it was good to have. It was, that, was, that was before we had air conditioning. I remember that effort to get the schools air conditioning. Man, that was a fond issue. Yes. Because uh, some people looked at the long range cost of yeah. maintaining that yeah. and energy cost. But even now, there are facilities that the district is setting about the air conditioning that. You didn't air condition in those times. Yeah. Uh, gyms. gyms. Yeah, gyms. We did. I remember that was our decision. You know, <laughs> well, you know classrooms fine. Gyms, that's a little bit too much. But now we, later on, we learn better. But <laughs> you started oh, with some, some folks that, that I've, down through the years, known pretty well. Uh, partly because I went to church with them. and. Uh, Billy Busby, whose son is Tucker in Kendall County, right up in Burnett. Right. Uh, and Billy is uh, doing well. And we went to the same church, uh, Marvin Niebuhr, and I taught his daughter at Marshall, and he was on the board with you. Uh, and Clarence Lesberg, who, gosh, she was a painter and a little bit of everything. Yeah. Lived right here in Leon Valley. Or, yep. He was a uh, pioneer in Leon Valley. He, he was. And I taught his, his son. Yeah. Uh, who is with Johnson Controls now. And, oh, is that right? And works out of the Netherlands. Really? Mm -hmm. In the Netherlands? Uh, and uh, one of the people that were j just, to me, a knockout person was Russ Mason. This really first class and had, his kids were great kids. Oh, yeah. Well, not only that, he, he, he was uh, executive vice president of, of National Bank of Fort Sam Houston, and, and if there's one thing that we needed, it was good financial right. advice, and he, he, sure certainly, got it. Right. he certainly was able to give us that. You know, there were so many wonderful things that happened in Northside. Uh, things that, of course, you and I remember the, the trials, Going through the down the court, going through the trials and tribulations of discipline hearings and all that. You know, some of the agonizing days were days when we had to shut school down. You remember, we had the, oh, yeah. the heavy rain days and bad weather days. And back then, we can't, we you know so many kids rode the bus. It was an important decision. You had and low the, water crossings all, yeah, over, all the over the place. Check with the principal at yeah. the Lotus. And <laughs> yeah, the, called him to the water up, and uh, but he, he, on top of that, the superintendents in town, we would all call each other at four or five o'clock in the morning, you know, to try to make some decisions. And we made most of the time we made good decisions, but I never will forget one decision I made that was. 
<laughs> but 10 o'clock the next morning, it was a beautiful day. The sun was shining, it was dry, it was just gorgeous, you know. And I had made a decision based on the information I had to not go. And uh, people would drive by and say, Cody, you idiot, this is a beautiful day. What did you do that for? And the, things like that happen, or, or uh, I remember so well. This is not a funny situation, but something that occurred to me since you mentioned discipline a minute ago. Uh, uh, discipline was an important con consideration, and the and the um, inflicting of a disciplinary measure against a student uh, became at that time uh, uh, only of only possible if you if if this was because the violation of a rule. Uh, before that time, it was discretionary. <laughs> But discretionary went out the window, and you had to have a had to have a rule that somebody violated before you could do this. And we didn't have those rules, so we went through the process of developing policies that uh, and rules and so forth, which which we didn't have very much of before that time. Yeah. This is uh, no uh, bad word about other librarians, but she was the greatest librarian I have ever seen. She just was terrific. And I, I can't take credit for having nominated her for that, but I'm so delighted that she got that, uh, who's going to have that honor. She just did a wonderful job. Well, you know, that, when, you, when I think about Northside, it, it's not anything other than people. We have had, God's just blessed us with great people. I we should have had that on tape, because that's a fact. That, that, is, that is, that is, that, definitely and that's a, a blessing. Fact. That was a time when our salary scale was way below oh. some other people. Yes, you got the best the of best the best, in spite of the fact that you couldn't pay the most. And that was his job for many years. That's yeah. right. Our and good was, folk. But we were so fortunate. It just, it, well, you know, we had a lot of. That's the best thing we had going for us for a long time. We had a board that wanted only what was best for the kids. Right. That's that's all. Right. There was not any desire to be the mayor, you know? They didn't want to be governor. They wanted what was best for these kids. And as a Take result, a we really, you know, the, everything was pointed toward that kind of effort. You know, all the it's, dollars. It's people. The, it's people. It's always people. Really, I don't know how we were able to communicate this attitude of the board of administration to the to the teaching staff and the maintenance staff and all those other people but i think they felt the felt that fact but, yeah, they, and therefore they, they worked hard and they wanted to succeed the too. Best we could. there's no that. doubt they felt that from mr boone and certainly from yeah ed cody they, they felt that and jack jordan yeah, Jack, you did the same amount of work on it. Yeah, but well, you know, the, the, uh, we were almost in a catch-22 as far as finances were concerned yeah. because here we were suddenly beginning to grow so fast we needed lots of new schools. Schools require money, money requires bond issues, yet our, our population and the people who, uh, uh, just, who lived in all those thousands of acres out there didn't care a hoot about that because they were farmers and they weren't paying a lot of taxes and so forth. And we really had a hard time convincing those people to pass a bond issue to, uh, to let us build a school that was absolutely, totally necessary. Well, you know, it's hard to make people that lived up there in Leon Springs give a hoot about what happened over my life. <laughs> like what happened <laughs> up there. Right. That was one of the biggest jobs in the world is to, you know, give a, a sense of solidarity yeah. about this uh, yeah. program because it was a far removed, 25 miles away, yeah. you know. It, it, and, and the whole tax situation so it was so different when they wanted a tax abatement for SeaWorld yeah. and that whole Westover Hills complex. Right. The the land that SeaWorld occupied was twenty one dollars a year yeah. in okay. value. At Ag on that bank, on an Ag exemption. Ag exemption. And Everybody kind of fussed about giving tax abatement at that time. What very few people understood was that it lowered your tax base and you got more state money. It took the state a long time to figure that out. Yeah, they were. Now, you weren't on the board at that time. But uh, no, but I knew Marty Winder, and I think that's the guy we ought to nominate for a school. 
yeah. someday because he, <laughs> he, he really did a great job of putting that part of the world on the map. That's Even today. Our, that's one of our large tax uh, generating areas now, I guess. That's right. It's, a, it's amazing. You go down Petranca Road when it used to be nothing but pasture. <laughs> Rattlesnakes and this pasture land now. Goodness great. I went out to the Ed Cody School the other day, and there, uh, there are as many teachers on that one stand as we had in the whole school district when I was there. Wow. That, that's the truth. Wow. I asked How them. many portables do you have? Oh, I didn't, <laughs> you didn't count that. There, there were no portables. That could be the Cody Independent School District. Uh, on that one, <laughs> well, they have over a thousand students out there. Holy smoke. And it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's, she, she does, the principal does a grand job. She's just good. And uh, I, I was so amazed when she told me, 120 teachers. And I thought, wow. Oh, I guess teachers and staff, you know. Yeah. but. <laughs> It was kind of startling to come up with this discussion. And then I think I counted the first roster. I've got a copy of the first roster when I came out here. Brant was the assistant superintendent. Murray was superintendent. We had 120 teachers. No, another thing that occurred to me as I was trying to think through this deal is the, uh, the camaraderie that we had on, on the board between uh, the superintendent and the deputy and the board, uh, you could almost say, well, these are good old boys or good old gals that just get in there and they pat each other on the back and so forth. But, but, but except with very few, few exceptions, we got along well and we focused on the problems that we had to solve and the planning that we had to do and, and, and got a great deal done. May have taken oh, till 10. No, I Midnight, think about but we that. did it. You're absolutely right. Uh, Gordon Meckler, who was uh, one of my great friends and great finds, is a business yeah. manager. It's true. He and I went down to justify our budget adjustments and budgets to Millard. Yeah. He'd get that slide ruled out, and we had to justify Every everything thing. in the world. Yeah. Now he would support it. Yeah, he listened. But he knew he what that budget. <laughs> That's what happens I mean, when you he hire an engineer out. on the board. He'd take that slide rule and look at the budget, boy, and he'd huh? say, I think you have more custodians yeah, this year per student, per classroom. He's right. He's right. Yeah. He was right. He made Jordan and I think through everything before we ever brought it to him. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, that's one of the things that we had to do before we could uh, be a real competitor uh, oh, yeah. With Northeast, is yeah. we had to we had to prove that we had fiscal integrity on on this uh, in this school and district, and there. we spent the money wisely, yeah. and and that sort of a, uh, investigation and questioning question did it. That. Yeah, and just, we were lucky. At guys like Bill Tuttle on the board. Yeah, oh, Do that's another one. Bill Tuttle, he was yeah. a wonderful yeah. CPA. He just right. did, did a great job. Is that although single member districts has some has some downside to it uh, this uh, I think that the, the good side to this was that that this helped overcome the uh, the feeling that I don't want to I don't want to vote to, I live here yeah. I don't want to vote spend right. money over That's here and, and so that kind of it, changed it that overcome. which helped a great deal and it got representation yeah the areas absolutely that needed sure. representing and that been right. a good thing well y'all generally met on Monday nights and I'll yeah. point out that was before Monday night football That's actually right. took over the world. Oh, sometimes we, sometimes we were here on Tuesday morning, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Henry Howe tell jokes that would drive our meeting at least two hours longer every single time. But they were good. Down. They were funny jokes. Yeah. <laughs> they were good but, jokes. You know, it's just <laughs> yeah, this very just, table. Yeah, exactly. Of course, we didn't have a glass top on it. It had some cigarette burns on it in those uh. days. Good. Well, we've, I've enjoyed yeah. this. Yeah, thank, you for the, thank you for the invitation. Well, thank you. Had the opportunity. It's great. Y'all are so articulate. That was really good. Did you learn anything? I did. Not and, anything and you did. I couldn't stop thinking that everything you said could apply today. Sure. It's not like it does. 30 years ago, this is how it was. It's like, it's still the same. The people. It is. The people and the PTA the people. and the yeah. uh, growth and the Money. financial <laughs> and, uh, like everything's changed and nothing's changed. Yeah, nothing's changed. Well, the, the scope of it has certainly changed sure. a lot. 
because <laughs> you know we had 5,000 students when I was on the board, and we got to push in the hundred now. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know if you know bigger means it's really if you're still well, just one kid at a time. You know? As long as you keep up with it, you know that's that's the if you stay ahead of the curve on the end. And, but, you well, know, the district's done a good job of equity. That's exactly. They really right. worked on that. Well, I think you're dead right. I think that it's been built in all along. Yeah. Well, well, another thing we didn't get on tape there, but but uh, to share with you my thoughts about this was that um, there seemed to be a uh, a sort of a hidden agenda that that we should uh, make the decisions in private and then we'll talk about it briefly and pass it at the board meeting. We didn't do that no, here, and, and also we we uh, made sure that that although the meetings were long, that we that the public had an opportunity to be heard.